All right, so please welcome to the stage Louis, Sam, and Alex from Comics. Give them a big hand. Hello. Uh, hey, everyone, I'm Sam from Comics, and uh, this is my first time on stage and not at front of house, so this should be interesting. Uh, for the last 10 years, comics have been performing, creating, and directing media for music events. So just before we get started, I'd like to play a short video just to show some of the work that we do. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it all started with co-founder Harry back in university, and we now have two studios and a talented team of touring VJs, 3D artists, and graphic designers. And uh, we started with small shows being paid with beer, and now we do a lot larger shows that some people might know us for, uh, with Swedish House Mafia, Avicii, Kygo, Logic, and Little Uzi Vert, to name some. Uh, they've all been using 2D, 3D, and film and live cameras, and now we, uh, we've been using Notch for the last year. Uh, together with Resolume, Notch has uh, made it a lot easier for us to blend the live cameras with the show content and like produce one cohesive show. Uh, and thanks to how easy it is to change stuff just on a laptop when we're on the planes between shows, we, uh, we've now been able to introduce some more like advanced techniques to shows like motion capture and like live depth capture as well. Uh, and it's never easy because we're sometimes doing seven shows at seven nights in seven countries in one week and uh, it can get, get crazy. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to introduce Lewis now, who is now going to go through a demo of how we set up the content for live shows and blend everything together. Thank you very much. Cool. Uh, thank you. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Lewis. I'm a motion designer, video editor, and touring VJ at Comics. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our creative process and how we use Notch within our workflow. It all starts with us sketching out ideas, mood boarding, and then stage by stage we can depict what medium we're going to use, whether that's going to be 2D, 3D, film and moving image, or Notch. So 
Here are two typical mood boards that we send. On the left-hand side is a mood board we'd send of visuals, and to the right is a notch mood board. The great thing about notch is that as we develop the visuals stage by stage, we can also do this with notch, and this allows us to have a much more agile approach to the client. And as Sam, just reiterating what Sam said earlier, it's allowed us to integrate the artist into the show and it's added that extra level of uh, production that we wanted within Resolume. And it really, really uh, brings, out, brings out the artists in the show. <clears throat> so now I'm going to switch over and show you a live demo of just how we go about creating a, a look. Cool. So, so here we have our typical mood board. As you can see, this was from a, a project last year for the chain smokers. Um, you can see it's kind of a grungy, gritty texture. So as we've got notch open, let's open up and see what we can do. Usually we would be using a video in source as this would pipe in our cameras straight into an image 2D within notch. Um, but for today, I'm not going to be using, be using the webcam. I'm actually going to be using our very friendly sloth mascot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with that being said, I always start with a color correction. So, just to save time, I've added a load of um, presets over here that we tend to use, but you can find all of them search in the node system, which is really, really handy. Um, so, because we get a load of different cameras and color profiles, I'll always add a color correction to the origin camera. This allows us to have a really, like, versatile approach when it comes to gigs. We can just load in, come straight back to this setting, and all we have to do is adjust this for the camera, and it will fit our camera filter. So let's go back to the mood board. So let's go and take out some of the saturation. I'm also going to sharpen up the image a little bit, and also give it a tint so it's a bit off color. Cool. So now I want to start texturing this and kind of giving it this gritty feel that we can see. So I'm going to copy the image 2D. And I'm also going to bring in a texture from the uh, file explorer up here. Drag that in. And the great thing is, any, like any other software, it works in layers, so we can easily blend different layers and styles within Notch. I think that, that works. Oh, nice. Over. Cool. Um, but as you can see, we'll just go back to the mood board. Still not quite textured as I'd want it. And I feel like it'd have a way more movement and it could really like pop more. So Notch has a really good um, post effects system. Uh, one of the post effects I really like using is Crosshatch. This allows us to take a texture and animate it. So we can adjust this on the fly, we can change all the parameters, and it's just, it adds that extra, extra layer we wanted. But now we've added all this, you can see that it's getting a bit lost within the picture. And for us, it's key that the artist tends to stand out within inside the filter, within still looking into the visuals, because ultimately, that's the reason why they want to be on screen. So let's go ahead and copy another image 2D. Solid. And I'm going to add a video null in just so we can save on the processing power. Instead of having to copy multiple, multiple videos, we can pipe it through a video null, which we can then add different effects in here, which would then just only affect this layer. And just turn off all this effect so you can see what I'm working on. So Let's go by adding a edge detect. This is uh, really good for just picking out the highlights in, in the image. And you can see that it really picks up the, the hairs on the sloth quite well. Um, but to give you a bit more context, I'm going to switch over to um, some pre-rendered live camera footage. Um, the great thing about Notch is you can just come straight into this video loader, change the video, and it just, it's just really adaptive for us being on the road. Um, 
So as now we can see this, we can turn everything back on. But you can see that it's still getting lost and we need to change the blend mode. So let's do that. Um, so now we can see the edge detect. I kind of feel like it's a bit too much within the image and we can make it a bit more subtle and add a bit more movement. So to do this, I'm going to add a generator. I'm going to come over here, grab a fractal noise and use this for the alpha. So what it will do, it will break up the edge detect, but all but also be going around the screen. So it just adds to the movement of the, the actual overall texture. So I think we're, the only thing we're missing in this last image, you can kind of see there's a bit of distortion and another great post effect that Notch has is a pixel sorter. So let's throw a pixel sorter on. Cool, I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit more because we only want to give it a bit of a hint that it's there and not too much. And then lastly, I'm just going to add a film grade and a slight color correction. So you can see it's looking pretty nice. Yeah. Um, so now that's ready to be used on the road. I'm going to export it. Well, there's two ways we use this on the road. Usually we would r run it in a builder for a more complex setup, whether that's multiple cameras, it just allows us to come in here, come back to the settings that we need to and change it on the fly. But if we have a more simple setup, we usually tend to uh, run a standalone application. This then allows us to be able to pipe it into Resolume, but also have a menu so we can easily adapt the different visual on the fly. So let's go ahead and save this out. Oh, should delete that. Let's save that. <clears throat> so while I've exported this, within the settings of Notch, I've also exported a web UI. This allows us to have the um, this allows us to have the menu while we have the Notch running. So uh, I'm going to load up one that I made earlier. And as you can see, we would usually send this to the second display, which would be our capture card, which Lexi's going to talk about in a minute. And we would then put that into Notch. But for now, let's just do it as a window. And also load up the web. <laughs> cool. So as you can see, we have our menu here. And during a show, we need quick access to be able to change on the fly what we're going to be using in the show. Just the, It really depends on whether the DJ is going to change the visual, the song, and we really need to match it within the show. And it allows us to have that fluidity and like really, really explore the visual language and keep it consistent throughout. So with that being said, I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of how great um, how great Notch is. So if we can slide, uh, switch back. Good. Cool. So this was um, a couple of shots while I was on tour with DJ Snake and Little Uzi. You can really, it's just really rewarding to see that, seeing your work come to life on a real big screen and it just has a massive impact being able to bring your artist into a show and on this scale. Um, the key for us is that with it being so uh, versatile, um, it just really does keep the visual language flowing throughout. Being able to run all these effects real time and having it merged in the visuals is really, really important to us. And it's why we love Notch and it's used in all of our shows. And again, another one from Little Uzi. I think it was like last month. And yeah, so that's enough from me. I'm now going to pass you over to Lexi, who's going to talk to you a bit more about how we integrate it on the road and in the touring environment. So can I give please raise your hands for Lexi?
Uh, hey guys, as Lewis said, I'm a touring VJ and general 3D specialist at Comics. I'm going to be talking to you today about how we tour our live setup. The biggest issue we face is that we can only take what we can carry. Now, in most cases, this is just a single Pelican and one backpack. As we do a lot of flights, a lot of traveling, we can't carry loads of flight cases and road cases with us. So in most of our live setups, we have the same gear on all our shows. This contains three Marshall 505 cameras, one Roland SDI mixer, and two Majorwell capture cards with one uh, Razer machine for notch and one PC specialist custom built show machine for Resolute. Now the cameras we all use are the Marshall 505 mini cams. These are probably the best small form factor cameras you can buy as they all have a, either an SDI or HDMI out or both. Now the reason it's good to have both SDI and HDMI out of a single camera is that when you're on stage, you, can't, you generally don't have time to run back front of the house on stage to focus cameras. So what the HDMI port allows you to do is have a preview monitor, focus the cameras on stage, and then you know that when you get back to front of the house, everything's going to be in shot and in frame and generally working. Now, these cameras also have interchangeable lenses, which means you can have a set camera for a set job. So for example, we have, in general, we have one camera that's in front of the DJ, one camera behind, and maybe one at the side. Now, the front camera generally have a wider angle lens because in most situations, the camera itself is only about 75 centimeters away from the DJ. And to get the whole shot, you need a wider angle lens. And the cameras around it will generally have not quite as wide angle lenses so we don't get so much distortion. Now, these cameras are native 1080p at 60 hertz, which is generally good enough for most applications. But we will run everything at 50 hertz just because most festival setups will have everything natively 50i. That just saves any confusing or reclocking issues from our end. Now, the cheaper way to do this is probably to use GoPros. But they're not quite as versatile. They're not quite as good at the job. It's a lot cheaper. But then you do need to consider the cost of converters to get down to SDI to get front of house. So if you definitely want to do this, I highly recommend the Marshall 505s, good cameras, and they don't mind getting wet. So the mixes we use, mainly because of the size, is the V1 SDI. Now, this has three SDI inputs and one HDMI input, full motor view, and it can do 720p, 720i, 50i, and 1080i, which is good as some situations the house system is a bit different. So you might have to drop resolutions and reclock before you hit this guy. And in most cases, it will accept what's given. Uh, the capture cards as well are important. So far, we've only had major well capture cards that work with Resolume. Now, we've tried Blackmagic ones, but they're not great. They're a bit finicky, they crash a lot. They tend to give you some weird artifacts and they don't accept as many sort of refresh rates and resolutions as the major cards do. Each of our cards has a capture card. So the notch machine will have a major card with an SDI input. So that comes straight out of the mixer into the notch machine to do all the processing. And the Resolume machine will have a major capture card with a HDMI input. This is so we can come out of the HDMI input of the Razer straight into the capture card. Easy peasy. Now, the laptops are probably the most important thing you can choose. For us, it's the small form factor of the Razor Blade that kind of helps us out on the road. We can use it as our daily driver, sits in the backpack, easy peasy. Don't really know you've got it on you. But the more powerful ones are our show machines, as we do sometimes have to run sort of 12K outputs. So it can get a little bit processor heavy and hot on the Razor Blades, as they do run much, much hotter than the PC specialists. Now, the razor blades we use all have the 1070 Max-Q, which is a good GPU for notch. It handles particles really well. It handles the volumetrics really well and lights and shading as well. The I.O. of the show machine is probably the most important thing you can choose. So if you have a machine with two HDMI outputs or one HDMI output, you're going to get a bit stuck in some situations. So the more outputs on a single machine you have, better. If you only have a single HDMI output, you can get an FX4 just to expand your, your outputs a little bit. Again, it depends on the kind of shows that you're working on. 
Now we all work with Resolume Arena as it's easy, basically. There's, there's no faffing about, everyone uses it, it works, plug it in, flashy stuff, good. Now I'm gonna go over how I personally route cameras into different parts of the LED screen. There are different ways to do it. There's no wrong way, there's no real right way. As long as it works, it works. So as you can see at the top, I have four camera presets. Now each one of these uses what's called a layer router. Now we all use this to basically integrate our notch effects into Resolume. So in general, this is done via a capture card. But if that fails, you can come straight out of Resolume via NDI. It has saved us on a few times, but mostly it's the capture card, just because it's more reliable and there's no networking involved. So we all treat the captured feed as you would treat pre-rendered content. Resolume doesn't see it any differently to a clip. It just sees a camera feed that's 1080p. It doesn't care what you do with it. So as you can see, this, if you're not familiar with Resolume, this is what's called an input window on the bottom, and that's the stage. So what, what we do is we set up the input window to basically match how the stage looks, and then that way we can sort of pre-program on the fly, on, on a plane, and know what, when we turn up to a venue, it's just gonna work most times. So as you can see, this is a sort of a preset that just looks at the center of the stage. So we basically route our cameras to just a simple section of the stage. This is handy for when you're doing sort of things that don't require so much video. You want to let the lights breathe a little bit. Now, if it's a lot of EDM shows are very in your face, constant strobing, constant white, it gets a bit boring. So you've got to just pull back a little bit and let the, let the lights and, and, and the music do talking for a while. Now this one again, most, most stages tend to have a cluster of lights in the middle. And to sort of work with that, we try and have not the whole screen on all the time it just looks a little bit cheesy. So what we tend to do is, if there's no IMAX, we'll make some IMAX. We'll basically route two, two camera feeds, one to the left, one to the right, and this lets the middle part of the stage just breathe, the lights can do their thing, and it isn't, just, it isn't so intense all the time. But sometimes you need it to be you know, flashy. So we route everything to as many slices as we can that you can see a full image on. Now this is important for sort of hard dance music, hard EDM and house, because it gives you more sort of impacts for when the cameras have to do the talking, you have to be looking at the cameras, that's what they're there for. Now this is a prime example of where it works well. This was at Ultra in Mexico, I believe. So we basically routed the camera feed to each slice on, on, on the stage. It helps us get a bit more impact as this is one of the bigger camera moments from my personal show. So that's how we sort of generate a bit of more dynamics in our shows. We just don't, you don't, haven't got to use everything all the time. Now recently, Resolume, with, with help from the Resolume community and the Notch community, there's been a OSC sort of plugin built in Touch Designer that lets you control Notch via Resolume. So not basically you're sending a OSC command out of Resolume by clicking on a clip, that then triggers a layer in Notch. So that stops you, in general, having to touch a notch machine if you don't want to. Everything is there directly in front of you. So what I'm going to be doing now is just opening up the floor for questions. If you have any questions from me, Sam or Lewis, in regards to touring or anything I've spoken about so far. Uh, the latency on the camera from, it depends on the system. If it goes directly via down an STI line, it's generally about four frames. But then the latency actually comes from the LED processor itself. So you're looking at maybe six frame on a bad day. So it isn't, isn't too bad. If you work with it, it's fine. If it's just down an SDI cable, then you're looking at about three frames, four frames, which isn't too bad. Yes, for the big shows, we run backups. But as we tour a lot of shows, the notch machine would generally be the backup. So have Resolume open in the background. So if the Resolume machine dies, we can just jump back onto the second machine. Because we have to carry everything, we can't carry two sets of everything because we'll just die. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, fix your playback frame rate? Yes, so I, again, it's a personal preference. If the house system, if the LED process is running at 60 hertz, I'll lock notch off at 60 hertz. I'll lock the output to 60 hertz. Everything's just running coherently. There's no weird clocking issues. But 
in most cases, LED processors outside of Europe will run at 30 hertz. So just clock everything down and it's, it runs a little bit easier. And then Notch is a little bit happier as well if you lock the frame rate, which I don't know why, it just is. Uh, no, so the cameras, I'll show you the... So each camera comes down a separate SDI line. So, so as you can see, each camera comes down a separate SDI line down to front of house. That's then plugged into the Roland, which captures three inputs and chucks it out of one input, one output. Then that, that, that lets us then capture a single feed into the capture card into Notch. Now, there are ways of capturing multiple feeds into Notch using a multiplex, but that's something we haven't quite experimented with yet. As again, we're touring it, it has to work, and this is a system that has always generally worked for us. I think depth cameras is going to be the next big thing because the biggest issue I think we all face is in most situations as a DJ booth, LED wall, which generates feedback. And that can look a bit tacky. But I think the real thing we need is not from Resolum to work without any issues together. So if we could work out a way to trigger clips natively from Notch or Resolume so they can talk to each other, that I think will be the game changer for VJs anyway. All right. I think that has to be the last question because we have to move on. Sorry about that. Cool. You can thank catch you. them afterwards. Give them all a big hand, okay? Cool. Thank you, guys. Well done.